If I look sick and sound sick, it's because I am. My granddaughter is a carrier. Allison, right? She's like two years old. She goes to preschool. She comes home with every disease you can imagine and passes it on to us. And if you hear like coughing and sniffling in the background, that's Uncle Kathy. She's shot too. But we've been cranking on the car anyway. And I mocked this all together to show you guys where we're at so far. It's actually starting to look like a car. It's starting to feel like a car, right? So check it out. Here. Come here. Let me go on it up the other side. So we wired everything. We finished running all the wires under the hood, right? I'll, I'll show you that in a second. And all of the important ones end up right here. Okay, so I still have to make all of these connections. I only finished mocking this together last night. So the next step is to make all of the, the, the basic connections. So what we have here is, so here's the original doghouse. Okay, and then I made this panel, this, this extension to it, which houses all of the electronics, and or will house all of the electronics. And it's big enough that I could reach in there and grab anything I need. All of the wires will be long enough on this switch panel, I could just pull it out and service whatever I've got to service. These are the two main feeds. One comes directly from the battery, that's the, this one here, and then this one comes from the alternator. So these will get attached to either side of the alternator gauge and then all of the other electronics will jump off of this so there'll be a, uh, a fusible link in here that'll run off of this wire and then there'll also be a resettable breaker that'll jump between this wire and this switch panel and then this switch panel will feed everything else and I left room obviously there's room for other things if I need to add as we go along this, is, this will all get covered with black vinyl, so that it'll, it'll blend in with the rest of the interior. This is all going to get covered with, with vinyl. And then this will get covered with, with rug. The shifter mounts here, I, it's, it's on order, hasn't gotten here yet. The shifter mounts here, and boom, 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 we got plenty of space. The car does have electric windows, but instead of putting the switches here in the, in the center like they are in the factory car, I'm going to put the switches in the doors where those speakers are. No radio in this car. So that's what we've got going on here. And actually, I, I love the way it feels. And like I said, this is all just mocked together to give you guys an idea of what it's going to eventually look like. So here, uh, here, come around over here. So I'm building a special car. I had to add a special piece. So I've got this genuine 1960s Stuart Warner tack. It's a 6,000 RPM tack. I stole this off of one of my other cars because it needed to be in this thing. And I think it really sets off with the steering wheel and that tack. I think it really sets off like the, that, that 60s Brit sports car kind of vibe that I'm looking for. The one downside to this tack is that it's an eight cylinder tack. I need, a, on, these, on these older tacks, the older Stuart Warner tacks, they have sending units. And you've either got a six-cylinder sending unit or an eight-cylinder sending unit. So I'm looking for a six-cylinder sending unit for one of these tacks. But either way, it'll work. It may not be accurate, but it'll give me an idea, you know, where we're at. Plus, we'll be using the tack as a, also as a speedometer, you know. Once we know what the car runs, RPM at speed, then you can gauge your speed based off of the RPM. Uh, okay, and then... So here's our, our alternator gauge, and it's mounted here because it is part of the whole electronic system. And then in here and here will be our temperature gauge and uh, oil pressure gauge. And I'm also going to put an idiot light, a nice bright oil pressure idiot light, because I have a funny feeling that you're busy swinging turns and stuff like that, you're not going to be watching the gauge. So mm -hmm. it'll have a, an idiot light there too. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I love it. I mean, I, it's, it's coming along. It finally feels like a car. So that's the inside of the car. So under the hood here, let's see. The last time you guys saw this, we had all of the wiring hanging over the, the front. I was testing it also. Now we've got it all rounded out the way I wanted it. Uh, you can see we've got separate harnesses. So this this one here is is for the lights to go up and down and let's get wired to a three-way toggle inside the car there uh this one here is is the main headlights and the halfways and then 
This one over here is for the turn signals. So they're all separate. And then the charging system, it's uh, we're using a later square back alternator. So this thing has to be run with a separate ground which we have wired in here. And then the point style regulator. And this is all of our charging system wiring. So you can see it's all it's all very neatly laid out. It's all easily separatable. So if there's a problem in any circuit or if I want to make a change, I don't have to disturb the whole wiring of the car. I could just take whatever whatever part of it that I want to work with out. On the mechanical end of things, um, I, I snaked a set of, of a stock set of Dodge Dart transmission cooler lines through here this is like this car really mechanically is a 1960s dodge dart i love this um i went with i went with the old style radiator because i can fix the old style radiator the later ones you throw them away i have a nice aluminum one there i'll use it on something i'll give it to somebody but i wanted a radiator that i can fix i can solder it so that's what we've got this thing here and it's more than capable of, uh, you know, of cooling. Now, I'm probably going to have to add an electric fan. And the reason for that is because if you see the height here, right, uh, most of the radiator is, is, is laid down low. And the height of a fan would just not be compatible. So I'm going to have to run some sort of electric fan on that. You know, what are you going to do? It's a compromise. Um, and the only thing I have to do with this now is... I need to permanently mount it, so I've, I've just got to come up with a set of brackets that'll, that'll fix this in place exactly to where it is. The hood, the stock hood closes over it, but I'm going to have to notch a little bit of the, uh, the framework right here to clear the cap. But other than that, she's all good to go. Um, so that's it. Oh, and we've got our pile of stuff. So. The big thing, you know, hot rodding, right, whether, whether it's something like this or a regular muscle car or whatever, hot rodding is all about power to weight, right? How much power you make, how much weight you have. So this motor with a good tune-up, the, the Super 6 intake manifold, the heat separated from it, curved distributor, probably about 140 horsepower, 100, 135, 140 horsepower, the way it, the way it is right now. Um, but what's it weigh, right? So stock Miata. They hit the scale. They hit the scale, ready to run complete cars at around 2,200 pounds. I'm thinking this car is going to be right around 1,850, 1,900 pounds. So, like, like here's here's the pile of stuff not going to the ride. And I tell you, it adds up. It's a weighty pile of stuff. And then you take take into account the fact that there's less than a hundred pound difference between this 170 slant six and the engine that came out. And this transmission is about 25 pounds lighter than the, than the original transmission that was in here. So I'm thinking that this car is going to be, like it says, around 1,850, 1,900 pounds. And I'm almost close enough now where I can get this thing on the scales and actually figure out what it weighs. Hopefully before the end of the week we'll be able to do that. And I'll be able to figure the, the, the front to weight bias and whatnot. It's, uh, this is exciting. So originally I had a self-imposed deadline of... Uh, of July 4th to have this car up and running. But I moved that ahead a little bit. There's a charity event that's supposed to be going on in Lebanon, Tennessee called Flex for a Cause. It's sponsored by the NBA. And a friend of ours, uh, uh, Scott Bruski, is, is helping to run this thing. So we'd like to have this car done and there at that show. And we'll give you more information on it as, as we go along. As for the fun and games here at the shop, I have all of the parts now for Bottle Rocket. Tomorrow, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to blow the front end apart, change the bushings. I have a, you guys who do, if you've ever done lower control on bushings, I have a shortcut thanks to John Wilburn, right, that we're going to try out on this and we'll show you how, how this goes. Uh, I, it's like so simple, so brilliant. I never, I don't know why I never thought of it, but you'll see it when we do this. And uh, we're going to do the, the weight comparison of the, uh, the brakes because we're going from the, the factory disc, which is very heavy setup, to the factory 10 inch drums. And uh, so before the end of the week, we'll have that back together again. And uh, I think that's it, right? I think I covered everything. Yeah, so I'm going to go home now. And I'm going to drink some NyQuil and uh, hopefully survive till tomorrow. And uh, Uncle Kathy, you, you, look, you don't look so hot. You all right? You're shaking your head. No, she's not hot. All right. That's it, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.